Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a 40 Mega CD2 or Sega CD2 to you American friends. Um, now this was sold as faulty, um, I have no idea what the fault is. Um, so what I'm going to do now is hook up my Mega Drive 2 to this thing uh, and see what we get. So yeah, if you give me five minutes to do that, I'll crack on with that. I've hooked up my Mega Drive 2 to the Sega Mega CD2. I've got power and video, and I've also got power for the CD unit. So let's power on, see what we get. And um, we're getting absolutely nothing. And I would expect the uh, access light to come on. Uh, it comes on even though there's no disc in there because it spins up. Uh, so yeah, I'm getting nothing on. Let me just make sure I'm powering on. Yeah, both of those of power. So yeah, this thing's uh, dead. Now, <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, Gadget UK uh, fixed a, uh, a CD. Uh, a Sega Mega CD um, that was showing exactly the same signs as this uh, and this problem was the fuse internally and you know what it, this is probably the same as well because it, there's nothing happening it's just totally dead so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get inside this thing and that's the first thing I'm going to do uh, is check that fuse see if it's blown so yeah give me five minutes and we'll get this lid off this Sega Mega CD to get in the Mega CD2, uh, it's actually pretty easy. There's six screws we need to remove. There's one here, there's one here, there's one just here, there's one here, there's one here, and the final one is here. Remove those six screws and you should be able to take the top lid straight off. Okay, we're in like Flynn. Now to remove the top metal shield, there's a number of screws we need to remove. Um, there's one just here. There's one here, there's one here, there's one just here, and the final one is here. Then what we need to do once we've moved those screws is there's two little tabs here. You need to bend them forward, so I'm just going to do that now. Uh, otherwise it's very difficult to get the shield over this uh, connection bracket. So yeah, I'm going to get rid of those screws, uh, and then I'm going to take the top metal shield off. What I want to do now is whip the actual motherboard out. Now to do that I need to remove three connectors. The first one's here, the second one's here, and the third one's here. I'll need to remove those and then I need to just remove two screws. There's one here and the other one is just here. Remove those and the actual motherboard should just pull straight out. Now if we take a look at the back of the Mega CD motherboard, uh, here's the power input jack. Now just to the to the left and a little bit further back, uh, this is the fuse here. This is a, a 2.5 amp Pico fuse. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my multimeter, I'm going to get it on continuity, I'm just going to check see if that fuse is blown. I've got my multimeter on continuity, if I put the two probes together you'll hear it beep. Let's test this fuse. What do you know? Blown fuse. So yeah, that needs replacing. Let's suck out that old fuse. find a replacement I know I had some somewhere there they are now these should be 2.5 amps uh, these are 1.5 amps these are for SNES uh, and these are for Mega CD so yeah I'll get one of these out and get it soldered in there top tip for you guys before you put any new fuse in just make sure uh, it's okay so once again 
I've got my multimeter on continuity. If I touch the probes, you can hear it beep. So let's just test this fuse, see if it's okay. Oh, it's gonna spin around on me. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Let's get the fuse in the board. That's the new fuse soldered in. What I'm gonna do now is get this partially back together, give it some power and see if we've got any signs of life. I'm partially back together. Um, time to give it a test, let's power on. See what we get. Oh, 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 that's a good sign. This is a PAL SACOM compatible Mega CD and will not operate in NTSC regions now. <laughs> that's because I've got switchless region mod uh, in my Mega Drive 2 and it's set to US and this is seeing uh, the Mega Drive 2 as a NTSC console. Um, now the reason for that is because these are region locked. Um, the way you get around that is you install a, a um, region free BIOS in it and then it don't matter which region you're from. So uh, yeah I'm just going to reset to PAL which will be green. There you go. Let go. And hopefully, yay, there we go, we're back in business. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get myself a CD, I'm going to pop it in this thing uh, and see if it will load again. Nice. I've got Soulface in there, um, it's a pretty good game guys, it's a, a bit of an R-type clone. So yeah, shut the lid, let's power on, hopefully it loads the disc, well that's a good sign, and I can hear the disc spinning, and there it is, press start, and if I leave it long enough it should start on its own, there you go, it's loading, sweet, yeah, blown fuse, unbelievable, same as gadgets. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to totally strip this Mega CD down so I can give it a really good clean. Now I need to strip this down so I can clean the bottom um, case. And I've already showed you how to remove the motherboard. Um, but what I need to do next is remove the optical block. Now to do that, I need to remove this ferrite ring. Now sadly I can't do it um, with one hand, I need two hands to do it. But it's just clipped in there, but obviously I need to end. So yeah, I'm just gonna pop that out uh, and then come back. I've gone ahead and popped out that ferrite ring. And what I need to do now is actually lift out the optical block. Now that's pretty easy now. Uh, all I have to do is remove this retainer uh, clip up like this. That just holds the wires down. And then I should just be able to take the whole of the optical block and lift it straight out. finish getting the bottom case ready uh, what I need to do is remove this shield now you probably heard that there was a little bit of tape uh, on the underside of this one so you may have to prise it off but that's that one uh, but to get this one off there's a couple of screws I need to remove there's one here and one here if I remove those I should be able to get that bottom metal shield off as well that's the bottom off of the Mega CD2 all stripped and ready to put in soak. Let's get stripping down the top of the case. Now what I want to get off first is the lid for the CD compartment. Uh, to do that I need to remove these two screws. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that and then show you what you have to do after that. Now to remove the top lid can be a little bit tricky. Um, what I need to do is bend the actual lid compartment there and you can see I've bent it and it's pulled it out a bit and hopefully you can see that here. It, it slots in I'll push it back in there you go you clip back in so you just need to grab it and just make sure it comes out there and I want to do the same for the opposite side now I'm gonna have to do that off camera because there's a spring there and obviously I don't want that to spring across the room 
uh, while I'm holding the um, camera. So I'll get out and do that and then show you what it looks like afterwards. But it's the same thing you do well, to this side as you did that side. And that's the top lid removed. Um, what I want to do next on the top lid is just remove this spindle um, connector. Um, now to do that it's pretty easy. Uh, there's three clips you have to remove. Uh, there's one this side, there's one just here and there's one at the bottom. Now obviously I'm going to do, have to do this off camera because I'm not uh, I'm not an octopus and I ain't got many arms so yeah I'm just going to whip this off and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And that's the spindle connector removed so that can go into soak now. That's the top lid all stripped down. What I need to do next is get the CD catch removed uh, and then that should be the top of the case all stripped. To get the CD lid latch uh, removed can be a little bit tricky but I'm going to show you how you do it. Uh, what you do is you come along as you move it forward like this you pick it up and you move it forward uh, and then you will have two little grips either side. What you do is you come along and you just grab the clip and you pull it and you push down at the same time and then you see it comes out. Now what you need to do uh, is the same on that side as well and then this plastic piece will just pull straight out. So I'll go ahead and do that and then show you what it looks like afterwards. That's the lid latch all disconnected. I'll show you those uh, things better there you can see all you do is just pull them up like that and then you push at the same time down uh, on this here and it what will happen is it will do this and then when that sides come out you just do the same on the opposite side and then it just lifts straight out now what I need to do now is just get rid uh, of the red button uh, and that's pretty much it that's the top case all stripped down sadly I can't do the light pipe for the access LED because you know Sega once again heat staked it in there but yeah what I'll do now is I'll get these in soak that's the upper and lower parts of the case in the bath all soaking what I'll do is I'll leave them for half an hour then come back and give them a good scrub and hopefully they'll look pretty decent after that why that stuff is Soaking in the bath, what I'm going to do now is give the optical block a, a, a service. Uh, now the first thing I need to do is get this black shroud off. To do that there's three clips I have to remove. There's one just here and there's two just here. I remove those clips and this shroud should just lift up like this and then I can get to the actual laser block and the gearing and, and give them a good clean. That's the optical block all cleaned. I've re-greased the rails, the slide rails. Um, I've also greased the um, gears. I'll show you the grease I've used. Uh, this is the stuff here. It costs about seven pounds, seven to 10 pounds, but it's worth its weight in gold. It's actually fantastic stuff. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'll get this shroud back over the top. Uh, and then when I put the system back together, the final thing I'll do so I'll just take a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip and I'll just give the laser lens a quick wipe. We're all scrubbed, we're all cleaned. Let's get this all back together again. And um, we're bolted all back together. So let's power on, see what we get. And um, we've got the Mega CD menu. So let's pop a disc in. Salt face in there again. Shut the lid. Access. And hopefully we get a boot. Winner winner. Chicken dinner. So yeah. Looks like we got this one up and running. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to see how good this thing is at reading CDRs. So I'm just going to get a burnt game and I'm going to pop it in this thing and I'll give that a test. Unfortunately, the 
Nice. I've got a backup version of Sonic CD in the drive. Let's close the lid, power on, and see if it boots. The CDR. Hopefully it should do because these uh, Mega Drive 2s are pretty good at reading CDRs. And as you can see it's saying press start, I'll just let it go on its own. So yeah, well, there you go, it's booting. Start the game. Well, there we go, we're working fine. So yeah, that's what the problem was. Blown fuse. Same problem Gadget UK was having. So yeah, there you go guys. Hope you like this video. Please give it a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Yeah, we gotta make a CD.